Chapter 63 The Watcher and the Wasteland Further along the ridge the companions were on, a dark mass was gathering. Under the shorter trees beasts were converging, forming a menacing crowd. They were black, and resembled deformed wolves with narrow heads, long jaws, and manes of long red and white spines which ran down their backs. Their teeth were like a wolf's, they bore claws like a jaguar's. They hissed, and long bluish tongues flickered from their mouths like those of reptiles. Lydia shrieked in anger and outrage. A volley of spells erupted from the young witches and wizards. The creatures under the trees staggered. A few fell. Then they rallied and charged towards the companions. Dean's mount, the largest of the wolves, let out a howl. The others growled and snarled. Then they ran at the attackers. What the hell are these? Lydia wailed. Chupacabras, I believe, Dev answered. A type of werewolf. Formidable fighters, and there are many of them. The wolves were larger than the chupacabras, but fewer. Slipping into the mind of one of her wolves, Lydia realised the problem. A wolf's instinct was to go for the neck of its opponent. The spiny mane of the chupacabras made that difficult, even dangerous. With superior numbers, these chupacabras had the advantage. The companion spells were not as effective against them as they had hoped. It was Lydia's responsibility to do something. If the chupacabras overcame, or drove off the wolves, they would turn on the humans next. You are the queen of the forests, she said to herself. But what in the forest was strong enough, and close enough, and in sufficient numbers to save them? The creatures of the wilders would rise to her call. She touched her invisible circlet with both hands, and willed the forest to help, to reject the watcher in his works. The scene of the battle before her was lit with a cold light, brighter than the sunlight. She realised the light was coming from her, from the circlet. Under the sounds of snarling battle came a rumbling as deep as the earth. Cracks appeared in the soil at the feet of the warring beasts. The chupacabras began to yelp and snarl and hiss. At first Lydia thought they were being attacked by snakes from under the trees. And she saw. The roots of the trees and plants were rising from the ground and snaking around the chupacabras. The howling, screeching beasts had stopped attacking and were being pulled backward towards the trees, downwards into the ground. Snapping jaws and twitching claws were the last they saw of the chupacabras as they slid under the forest floor. The companions were silent. An unearthly hush spread along the ridge and on into the forest around them as the last rumble faded from hearing. Even the wolves were still, apart from their panting. The people answered, Lydia murmured. The wolves backed away from the shadows under the forest trees and gathered with the companions on the grass of the ridge. The light from Lydia's circlet had gone, and the westering sun had taken on a warm glow as it descended. There came a cold, piercing shriek from away beyond the ridge towards the evening sun. They all turned in its direction, shivering. The watcher, Lydia said. We should camp, Lydia directed. Lydia, I suggest we go down to the open rocky round by the river, said Dev gently. I don't know who is more spooked. The wolves are our friends. Lydia nodded, and the humans and wolves formed a sombre cue behind her as she retraced their steps down from the ridge. Dev, Lydia said, looking dazed, it's good to have you back. Where's Odysseus? Shona answered, jogging closer to Lydia. He got the token and swapped places with Dev. I don't think he expected it to happen. He wouldn't have, Dev confirmed. He believed that, as your mentor, he was immune as you, Sophie and Freddy, are. Perhaps it happened because your other mentor was the one he was swapping with. Can't be sure. I've lost Oddy, she asked, in shock. He will join us again, at the end, Dev said. Ambrose told me the last one sent back to him would return to us. And he is safe where he is. Lydia gave Dev a glimpse of a smile. I've used the word awesome lots of times, said Corbin. We all have. Now I know what it means. I should have reacted sooner, Lydia said, a catch in her voice. I lost two wolves. We only lost two of them, Christy corrected, 
swinging her rucksack off her shoulder. Don't beat yourself up. There's a waiting list for that job. Now, this looks like a decent campsite. They had reached a grassy bank, a little higher than the river. Christy was right. It was a good place to camp. Lydia excused herself as the others busied themselves with setting up tents and lighting a fire. She went a short way off to talk to the wolves. As she returned to the camp, the wolves set off towards the north. Are they leaving? Dean asked. Lydia shook her head. I apologised and thanked them. I said they had no further obligation to stay. They said they would carry on with us in the morning, but needed to hunt. They're not as badly injured as I'd feared. Glad they're coming back, said Freddy. I've got used to them. Yeah, I'm all right with them, Sophie agreed. As long as I have Xander to protect me. She was holding the cat in her arms as she joined the others by the fire. Look, you lot, Lydia said. There's some serious stuff we need to talk about. Oddie told me that the seed token we just got was the last. We have one more thing or place to find. That's where the quest ends. I don't know exactly what that means. Somehow we have to stop the Watcher. If we can't, he gets into our world and does whatever he wants. I think that would be bad news for our planet and everyone we love. All eyes were on Lydia. Every face she saw looked dismal, even Freddy's. If I might, Mistress Lydia, Quint asked. Please do, Lydia said, glad to have someone else speak. I do not remember clearly, he said, but I am aware I have accompanied other quests. I do not know when. Time works its way strangely here. The tokens the other quests sought differed from those you have received. Each quest has ended in giving battle to the Watcher. The items they gathered have helped them in the fight against the Watcher's army. My point is this. I do not believe any other team collected all their tokens before meeting the Watcher. There were other quests before my time. I, I think I was on one of those quests and stayed here. I cannot be certain. What I wanted to say is that you have been the most successful group. You are all the best. Meeting the Watcher will not be easy you have more tokens to help you than ever before. Be of good heart. Young though you are, you may prevail. Lydia blinked hard and rubbed her eyes. The relief she felt at hearing these words came like a surge of friendship, of love. Perhaps her companions would all survive. But she had come to a realisation about the seventh essence. If she was correct, it meant one person must die. She was the hero of this quest. She would save all her friends, but she would be killed. Lydia couldn't tell them that. Not here, not now. Thank you, Quinn, she smiled. This is where we stand. We'll carry on towards the west. I think we all heard the watchers scream when the forest took the beasts he sent against us. That scream came from the west. I'm hoping the mandala would guide us one last time and lead us to where we need to be. Then we take the fight to the Watcher. Yes, Dean cheered. But we should have something to eat first. We should, Lydia agreed with a grin. In the morning, it was barely light by the time the companions struck camp. The wolves had returned minutes after Freddy and Dean had taken over for the last watch. No one had slept well after the events of the previous afternoon. They set out towards the west, skirting around the ridge where they had fought the Chupacabras. Their travel that day took them to the edge of a lake. The far bank was almost out of sight, but the southern end was close by. They passed to the south of the lake, crossing two streams and a small river which fed it. They stopped to rest twice. Mandala showed them nothing. They carried on westward. The sun reddened and sank into the trees ahead. They set camp again. As the others were going about their usual chores, the leader of the wolves approached Lydia. He nudged her shoulder with his muzzle. Lydia took the hint and opened her mind to his. We shall stay with you one more day, the wolf told her. Your seer will be shown your destination tonight. 
Your aim is a place my people will not enter. We will take you as far as we can, but must leave you. Why won't your pack go there? Lydia asked. She suspected the question might be an insult to the wolf, but losing her guardians distressed her. She felt she ought to be offended that these forest creatures, her subjects, would refuse her. But she could sense the wolf's pain. He was incensed that he was failing her, and resented the fear her destination evoked in his pack. Lydia was sorry, she had asked. It is a place which causes suffering, because of our history, he said. It is a place of shame for us. I understand, she told him. To an extent this was true. She could sense the shame and fear, but she didn't know the history. She was not about to ask. It's a tree, Freddy said in an excited whisper. Lydia peered into the mandala. There was a tree. From the scale of its leaves and the grass at the base of its buttressed trunk, it looked to be an immense ancient specimen. The mandala never showed its visions in much surrounding context, but she knew she would recognise it. This was not a tree to be overshadowed by its neighbours. This tree would stand out. She felt the pull of the tree guiding her to it. It lay as her shadow lay, almost due west. As Lydia sent Freddy to rouse the others, Dev came out to her. It was not the same as having her Odysseus, but Dev was knowledgeable, even wise. She told him what the leader of the wolf pack had disclosed to her about having to leave them. He scowled in thought for a while. There was something Ambrose mentioned, about a battlefield and the wolves, he said at length. If I remember correctly, and if Oddy interpreted Ambrose's rambling correctly, the wolves fought on the watcher's side once. Oddy thought the Watcher had tricked them into doing so, and they had regretted it. You'd think they'd want a chance to fight against the Watcher, Lydia said. Not necessarily, Dev mused. Perhaps they suspect he will try to influence them again. Or they have a code of honour, as many warriors do. They feel ashamed. Clearly, they won't fight him. I guess not, Lydia conceded with a sigh. I'd feel a lot happier with them on our side, though. Even happier, Dev joked. Yes, yeah, sorry, she said. I know I'm down. Doesn't it get to you, Dev? You mean the hopelessness of students trying to step in between two worlds at war with each other, he asked. It would crush me if I thought about it. So I treat it as an intellectual exercise, a puzzle to be solved. If I can reduce it to a crossword, and I can deal with it. Otherwise, he shrugged. She could see the wisdom in his approach. For her, though, her emotions clamoured to be heard. She knew she had to push it all down. She had to focus if she was to function. The companions travelled all morning, pausing only to let the wolves drink at a stream. Around midday they stopped again to eat some lunch. Freddy tried to feed his wolf some of his human food, as it was all vegetarian, the wolf had little of it. What she had eaten might only have been from politeness. Jimmy and Dean were conducting one of their mock arguments. Diddy was thinking she could do without such behaviour, but realised it entertained the others. It was best for them not to dwell on the task ahead, as she was. She wondered if she should tell them about the wolves' impending departure. She didn't want to spoil their fun while it lasted. Freddy had been sticking close to her all morning, and did so again when they continued on their way after lunch. He was occasionally chirpy, and always positive. He talked to her about their best memories together. There were the holidays at the old rectory, such sweet and funny times. There were their journeys to and from school on the Hogwarts Express, trips to Diagon Alley, days spent by the loch sitting on the grass with impromptu picnics. Evenings in the joint common room with snacks and drinks from the kitchen elves. Sophie came to join in the reminiscences. Lydia lost herself and her troubles in the warmth of their friendship. It had been a dull afternoon. They spent much of their time in the shade of the trees, but even there they could tell the light was dwindling. It was too early to be twilight. It must be cloudy. Perhaps a storm was gathering. 
They descended into one valley to find the stream at its bottom shrouded in mist. The wolves were on edge, she could feel. There was a distasteful bitterness to the haze, like an acrid smoke from years past. She followed the mandals urging out of the fog and westward. Beyond the misted valley the trees grew sparse and stunted. They were bent and swept towards the east, as if by a lifetime of frequent high winds. They crested a ridge and the vegetation seemed to stop. Ahead of them lay a desolate plain. It permitted no trees, and the sparse grass was coarse and pallid. Wisps of mist straggled from the few scrubby bushes, like abandoned shreds of spider webs. The wolves had halted. The companions slipped off their mounts to the ground. Lydia opened her mind into her wolves. Thank you for bringing us all this way, she said. I release you from your duty to me, and honour your aid. I would follow you, my queen, he replied, even into this place. But my pack would not, and they need my leadership. Farewell. She pulled down his head and rubbed her face on his muzzle. She felt a surge of emotion, gratitude and love, but also a kind of indignation. Lydia wasn't indignant at the wolves leaving. She was indignant that they should feel they must help someone arbitrarily appointed as their queen. It was not as though she had done anything for them. Her actions, her very presence, had got some of their pack killed. Mere quest, said the wolf leader, is to save all the forests, and the plains, the seas, the mountains, the skies. That is why you are our queen. With a rush of shame, she realised he had heard her thoughts. Her mind had still been open to his. He had heard her whining to herself about how unfair everything was. But there was no malice in his words. Neither was there disgust nor pity. It explained why they were all there. That was all she needed. He was right. They had their job to do. She felt now that she had the clarity and strength of a wolf, of a queen of wolves. She smiled and patted him on the shoulder or as near the shoulder as she could reach. Farewell, she said out loud to the wolves. She turned to her band, the companions. Our friends leave us now, while we go on across this... She swept her hand towards the scene which confronted them. This desolation. <laughs>